hi guys welcome back to my channel so today we are going to be talking about five reasons why christian women in particular always get heartbroken and there's a reason why i'm focusing on christian women because i'm a christian i'm a woman and i fall into this category okay so the first reason is that we do not fit men i repeat oh, don't mind my mic very rude anyways guys so the first reason is that we do not vet men first john 4 verse 1 says beloved do not believe every spirit but test the spirit to see whether they are from god right because many false prophets have gone out into the world and i have my notes right here with me so that's why i'm reading guys there are many persons who are going to come to you and they were sent by the devil to deceive you into thinking that they're the ideal partner for you and because we don't test the spirit because we don't vet this individual we end up in so many heartbreaks and pains and what does it mean to vet to vet something means that you're going to take it to a process to prove it to you're going to see if this thing or this individual is up to the standard and up to the level that you have set for yourself and multiple times we compromise during the vetting stage and because we compromise our standards which were a standard for a good reason to begin with we end up with something or someone that is subpar and we end up in disappointment thus breaking our hearts and even breaking god's heart because god never wanted you to be in disappointment in the first place so reason number one we don't bet reason number two idolatry right the partner was the idol of your heart so when we talk about idolatry and idol worshiping a lot of persons think that i'm we're talking about a spirit or think that we're talking about worshiping a deity or a god not necessarily my phone can be an idol a job can be an idol a child your child can be an idol anything that you put above the lord is considered an idol right and with idols you always have to make sacrifices when we give sacrifices of to god we're supposed to present our bodies as a living sacrifice holy acceptable and pleasing which is our reasonable service right so when we are honoring our bodies when we're eating right when we're exercising when we're listening to christian music and not secular music when we're not partaking in drugs and alcohol and things that can harm our body that is a sacrifice unto god we're making our bodies whole and clean holy and clean so that he can dwell in this beautiful vessel so that's an example of a sacrifice no when it comes down to relationships when you're giving this person your time your money your resources and every single thing to the detriment of you that is you making a sacrifice unto that person when you are giving up your relationships with your family and friends just to please this individual that is a sacrifice as well and so because these sacrifices aren't even shouldn't even be a requirement to be in a relationship but because you're doing it you're making this person an idol which you should not and the lord says that you shall not have any other god before him so because you say you're christian and you serve the one and true living god and you have an idol of your heart which is a relationship which is a relationship the loud is saying okay since this relationship is an idol since this relationship is an idol let me snatch this idol from you let me snatch this man let me snatch this woman let me take it away from you how does god allow how how does god snatch this relationship he calls it he allows a breakdown to happen he he allows the enemy to attack it 
there are so many things that happen because we allow a relationship to become an idol and we need to stop it because it's ending up in a heartbreak exodus 20 verse 3 to 5 thou shalt not have no other gods before me you guys need to read that scripture because if you be having idols with your relationships you're gonna end up heartbroken number three um you didn't guard your heart proverbs 4 verse 23 above all else okay guard your heart for out of it flows the issues of life sweetie and what does it mean to guard your heart it means that you're gonna protect it and a lot of persons are like how do i guard my heart how do i protect my heart well for starts you're gonna be careful with what you share with people okay you just know this person you need to share with them like the basics when you're just starting to know someone you don't need to share with them on the first date your whole life story you don't need to share with them your whole issues and struggles and trials and things like that that's none of their business you need to protect your interests you need to protect um and keep close to your heart what you value the most because i think it was steve harvey that says that um a lot of women they're giving men the roadmaps to their hearts which you should not be doing that right you need to to stop it you really need to stop it and um because you're giving men the roadmaps to your heart these men they're not working as hard as how they used to you're telling them everything every single thing that you want every single thing that you need and it's making it easy for them you're not even a challenge you're not even a challenge you need to to not overshare your future plans and goals with this individual that you're just meeting like for example if you're just going out on a date with someone why do you need to tell them your 10-year plan it's the first date i understand that yes you're gonna vet but your hopes and your dreams and your aspirations doesn't need everything doesn't need to be shared explicitly during the first date it does not so you 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 need to 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 pace yourself slow your roll and guard your heart and have your standards there and have your boundaries put in place set them in place so that when an individual comes man or woman and they're trying to penetrate your heart you have your guard you have the holy spirit to guide you and you have your boundaries and your standards in place so that they cannot read your heart and you won't end up heartbroken number four high hopes and expectations proverbs 13 verse 12 says hope deferred makes the heart sick but when desire is fulfilled it is a tree of life guys stop having high expectations for these relationships out here please please <laughs> i look so funny a while ago y'all need to stop having high expectations i'm not saying that um you're not you're, you're not supposed to aim for marriage of course if you're a christian when you're getting in a relationship you're supposed to like um have the hopes that one day you can marry this person however you don't just jump into a relationship like that you have to vet the individual and then after the individual is vetted then while you're guarding your heart you're going to get to know the person collect data on this individual that's why it's called dating and then you're gonna ask the holy spirit and you're gonna ask 
the Lord to guide you and to reveal all truth if this individual is from him, the Lord, or not. Right? But you can't, like, after a month or two, be saying that this man who you've known for a month or two, you want them to to marry you in five months time or you want them to be your baby daddy or your baby mama (laughs) you can't that don't make no sense yo you cannot be saying that oh my god i met this dude for one week and i think i love him and I want him to be my husband. This is my husband from the Lord. I had a dream. I had a prophecy, a prophetic word. Y'all need to stop it. Y'all need to stop it. I don't come from experience now, okay? You guys need to stop it. Because that is idolatry. And not only is that idolatry, you're setting yourself up for failure. Because you don't know if this individual is presenting their true self or if they're presenting a mask and most of the time whenever you meet someone you are seeing you are seeing them for the mask that they present like everyone the first time you meet them you're only seeing the presentation mask you don't know what's under the mask so you're falling in love with the mask but you 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 don't know who is under the mask and so when you finally find out who's under the mask and you realize that that's not what you want you get heartbroken because your expectations were high and ridiculous and they were based off of a falsity right second corinthians 10 verse 5 says casting down imagination that exalted itself against the will and knowledge of god and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ you need to cast out those imaginations sweetie you need to cast them out and say listen i'm going to be level-headed in my decision when it comes on to dating because at the end of the day i do not want to end up with an illusion and that is what happens to a lot of christian women like they have this illusion of what the perfect man is and the enemy sends a representation that of that illusion and then they think that it's the lord and after some time when they are now in covenant whether through marriage being engaged having sex whatever the 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 covenant is when they're in covenant with this individual this person takes off the mask and when you look it was a whole fluke it was a dud it was a demon it was someone sent by the devil and then you're duped you're duped and you say why lord why why did this happen to me why why couldn't you show me why couldn't you could you couldn't you stop it when the lord was saying wait guard your heart fit and you were saying god i'm lonely i need a man i need a woman yeah a lot of times we cause our own problems and then number five you did not consult god (laughs) this is like the most important one okay scripture says in matthew 6 verse 33 but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and everything else shall be added unto him right you didn't see the we the will of god if this individual was in israel and you have uh, a lot of people that's gonna say that well god gives us choices that that is true right personally i believe that you have the spouse that god planned for you to marry from the foundation of the earth you have that and then you also have choices which are godly choices as well where god said okay you can marry this person or i'm okay with you marry that person so whether or not the spouse is like the one or an option as long as it comes from god it's good 
However, when you're choosing something or someone rather that is completely outside of the will of God and you guys are unequally yoked and you get married and then when it doesn't work out, you blame God. Who should be blamed? You or God? The Bible says do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers because what business does darkness have with light? I'm paraphrasing, but the Bible says something according to that. What business? What business? If you're a Christian, you are a Christian for 10, 5, 15 years. That I, I would consider that a mature believer. If you're reading your Bible, praying and fasting and you have a relationship with God. What are you doing marrying someone who is not a Christian? Who is a sinner? Or what are you doing marrying someone who is of a different faith? Or who you they they're just getting saved and you guys are imbalanced in your your walk. That no make no sense. And I believe that God has someone for everybody who desires to be married because not everyone wants to be married. But if you desire to be married and you have options and you don't consult God if this option is the right option, you're going to be in problem because many people also think that um, the problem with Christian relationships and why um, people are getting heartbroken is because... Um, they're they're christians are marrying non-christians that's true yes but you have christians who are marrying other christians and they're not a good fit because if i'm a christian for 20 years and i marry someone who is just saved how is that man going to cover me and he's just saved his level of faith is new he hasn't gone into the depths of experiencing god like christianity comes with a lot of trials and battles you know and some people that get saved and then they go right back out into the world and then they, f they get back up into christianity and they have like a like a, a teeter like a seesaw moment where this minute they're up next minute they're down this minute they're up next minute they're down and then they're finally stable in christ and then they're walking it's like a baby learning how to walk so you who is a full-blown adult in christ you're gonna marry a baby in christ that made no sense and then when you're there talking about spiritual warfare and you're talking about the different principalities and powers and the marine kingdom and the territorial demons and you're talking about this 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 and this person who is new to the faith don't know a thing you're talking about and can't even pray in tongues can't even battle in the spirit war in spirit and you go take that person up as your husband or your wife what do you think is going to happen it's like you're going to be dragging that person always having to carry them until they, they they mature if you are eating meat go seek someone who's eating meat if you are drinking milk go seek a believer who is at the drink drinking milk stage so that you guys can both grow in the lord equally unless you want to be a a, a load carrier and, and carry people or carry your spouse but as for me no sweetie i i don't want to be constantly carrying somebody i want to be able to stand on my own my partner to be able to stand on his own and the lord carry us together that that's a healthy and stable relationship because you don't counsel with god because you don't consult him Y'all take up people that weren't even meant to be in your lives as a partner. So anyways, guys, these are five reasons why Christian women get hurt. If you have any other reasons, let me know in the comments section below. And I want to do a part two to this. Let me know if you're interested. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share if you care. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.
I'm gonna do a thumbnail. <laughs> 